so I, I tend to give lectures that will promote the idea of, of aquarium keeping where it is as easy as possible. Uh, my, my goal in the reef keeping hobby is to, while on the one hand explain how you can use technology to achieve certain goals, on the other hand trying to strip that technology down to the bare minimum to make it both affordable and simple uh, to maintain. So this little lecture um, is one that I prepared for a group in, in Spain where they asked me to talk about the latest trends in the aquarium hobby. Uh, in, in chatting when we were outside earlier, uh, I, I gathered a question like, you know, uh, what do you recommend now for setting up a small reef aquarium? Well, I, I've seen a lot of reef aquariums around the world and I've seen a lot of successful ones and they don't all necessarily use the same filters or the same supplements and the same techniques. There are some commonalities but uh, there, there are differences and, and basically you can have success with many different systems. So I, I don't like to shove that idea down people's throats. Uh, so you're not going to see me do that. Um, I, I wa wanted to talk in this lecture a bit about biological filtration and some, some of the problems that we encounter in, in the reef aquarium hobby mainly um, and some p potential solutions and, and some mysteries. So what's the latest in the reef aquarium hobby? Well, maybe spa spawning killer whales would be a, a goal in the, in the future, but probably not. Um, so what about physical characteristics of our aquariums? Um, you know, size, oh, you know, now I'm remembering, I didn't look at this lecture. I, I, I did a little tongue-in-cheek thing about uh, if you wanted to have success with uh, spawning uh, killer whales. Uh, they, they, being that they're the largest predatory mammals uh, or predators of mammals ever known, uh, you kind of need a big tank. I'm not going to go on with that joke of this this lecture, but you know there are some big reef aquariums out there. Um, this one being an exhibit at the uh, aquarium in Monaco. Um, it's it's not a particularly successful exhibit. They have some smaller reef aquariums um, in this museum that are by far nicer. And so you might wonder, if these people know how to set up a reef aquarium, why did they fail with this really giant exhibit? And it's one of the limitations of a very big reef aquarium is that they tend to be tall, and the taller you make the aquarium, the harder it is to aquascape in a way that is truly natural. You end up building a wall, and because the artificial light is such a, a point source of light, it's very hard to illuminate. You know, that looks really bright to our eyes. Um, the corals are not receiving light in the same way they do in, in nature where you know they tend to grow horizontally with respect to the light. You put them on a wall and it, it, the lighting just isn't correct. Um, and even the, you know this giant aquarium where it's so big you could be scuba diving in it, that's in the Great Barrier Reef Aquarium. That one is, is only moderately successful. Um, how many of you have gone up there to see it? How's it doing these days? It's been probably about eight years since I've seen it. It's fairly uh, poor. Still fairly poor? Yeah. Um, the, the rock structure was just some giant boulders that they threw in there, and then they, they put corals in between the little crevices. Between, It's not well thought out. That's not the way the reef looks. You know, the reefs are, you know, you can have a buttress where there's a wall, sure but the corals are really growing on the top side or air, anywhere where there's a nice slope where you can get horizontal features. Uh, the soft corals seem to be okay in the, in the big Great Barrier Reef Aquarium, but the stony corals didn't seem to be doing all that well. And it's a pity because um, where they're located, really all they would need to do is just open up the taps. They could bring in the water from the harbor. It looks kind of polluted to you and me, but rest assured that water's just fine for, for a reef aquarium. Um, and that would help with just maintaining the chemistry. Uh, it's very, you know, when you get to this size aquarium, the supplementation that you need to do for calcium and alkalinity is horrendous. Um, so if you have an open system as they could potentially have, it would be a lot easier to maintain. Uh, lighting again is an issue, but they have natural sunlight, so they avoid that problem. So what about nano aquariums?